The enormous amount of energy expended by the males in showing themselves off more and better demonstrates just how important colors are in the lives of those animals that can distinguish them. These Indian peacocks, for example, are obliged to literally mesmerize the females if they want to copulate. The peahens, plain and ugly, sit back, enjoy the show and make their choice. In the case of the flamingos, their bright pink wings and their dances are signals which help all the adults of the colony to synchronize breeding. All the chicks must grow in time to be able to fly off before the water is evaporated by the heat. A matter of life or death. And as might be expected, human beings who have excellent sight to appreciate colors, the legacy of our past as tree-dwelling fruit gatherers, have introduced color into our culture, stealing the feathers from the birds and imitating their dances. This is a ceremony called Tanimet. It is held in certain Indonesian tribes to introduce and pair up unmarried individuals of one village with those of another. Naturally, color plays a central role, this time a cultural development rather than a genetic one, as in the case of the birds. Identical methods with the same aim in mind. The master of ceremonies or matchmaker will witness the forming of couples which must be accepted by both parties. As all the inhabitants of a village are related, the men have to find wives in other villages in order to avoid endogamy. They look at each other and take each other's hands, mingling and gradually defining their preferences. The ceremony can last days or even weeks. But among the survivors of the planet Earth, chromatic language also serves other functions, and no better place to see this than in the paradise of chameleons, Madagascar. For some, the best shade is background color, precisely in order not to be seen by predators. If you're small and not poisonous, your best bet is to be seen as little as possible. In these cases, the verdict of the predator is final. Those that are good at hiding survive and have children, while those that make mistakes are disqualified and die. The result is there for everyone to see.
On the other side of the world, in the jungles of Venezuela, these maquiritare women are collecting the fruit of the tree they call onoto. They extract the seeds from which they make a red dye, which is very important for them. They are going to paint themselves, ready to hunt. The Makiritare have always surprised anthropologists with their vast culture based on a symbolic universe. They ritualize everything, and in particular their relations with animals and plants. Before setting out to kill an animal, they must, through the shaman, establish contact with that animal spirit and seek its consent. Through ritual paintings, hunters believe they will attract certain animals and scare off others. In their mythical universe, hunting is a kind of seduction in which the men pair up with animal females by mutual agreement. In these cases, as in others, the shaman is a spiritual hybrid, somewhere between them and the animals, and establishes the bridges necessary for the union. The cultural tradition of the Amerindian peoples of the Amazon basin is based on paintings on the bodies of the tribe members. The animal spirits only permit predation if a relationship of affinity has been established. Up to now, we have seen how the language of colors conveys messages and helps in different situations where communication is necessary. But wherever there is communication, there also lies and deceit. On occasions, giving the wrong impression can save your life. That is a lesson the Asado, a Papuan tribe, learned some time in the distant past. As always in Papua, they commemorate that event by reproducing it every year, so that the oral tradition is not lost. According to the legend, the Asaro village was constantly being attacked by the ferocious warriors of a neighboring clan. They were living in permanent dread of the final decisive attack, when an old man had a dream in which he saw horrific grey beings. Then they had the idea of disguising themselves with mud and covering their heads with masks of diabolic appearance. Dressed like this, they approached the enemy village and scared them off forever. There are many similar stories in the history of mankind, and the decisive factor in the outcome is always the same, our fear of the unknown. The fact is, having or pretending to have a ferocious appearance can serve to dissuade many enemies, and often avoids the need to fight in order to demonstrate your strength. These techniques should not be underestimated, as they have been and continue to be used by armies and police forces throughout the world. <laughs> 